How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the source code. My name is Deshaun and in this video we are going to be getting started on configuration files. Again, I'm kind of just going to be going over sort of the basics of configuration files and we're going to be using JSON files. Pretty much common practice for whenever you're pretty much storing any information uh, locally with uh, Discord.js and JavaScript. All right, so first off if you guys are not subscribed to the channel be sure to subscribe so you guys can be notified whenever we upload a new discord js video and also leave a comment down below for what you're planning to make with this series whether that be a a game bot or you're going to make a bot for your, your fortnite stats or your fortnite server or you're going to make a music bot uh whatever you're going to be making be sure to leave a comment down below because i would love to hear what you guys are going to be making all right anyways let's get into it so the first thing that you're going to want to do is let's go ahead and create a new file, which you can do with this icon here, or you can just go ahead and type control N and I'm not clicked into visual studio control N, which will just create a new file. And we'll just make a really easy, just double uh, squiggly brackets there. And then let's just go ahead and save this as config.json. Okay. So now that we have that, we're going to go ahead and put a couple of variables inside of here. Now you can go ahead and put in whatever you want. I'm going to put in a little bit of everything so that way we can kind of go over the real basics of JSON. Uh, I would also encourage you to familiarize yourself more with JSON and how things are properly formatted and what you can do inside of JSON files. Um, like I said, I'm going to kind of cover a little bit of everything here. Um, uh, but if you just need to know a little bit more, definitely do a little more research on your own. All right, anyways, so one of the first things that you'll commonly see inside of your configuration file is your prefix and your token. That's generally what you'll see used the most. Um, obviously, there are other things like if you have server specific settings or even guild specific settings. Well, not guild specific, but just like general settings that you want applied throughout servers and that you don't want to have to just keep referring back to. Maybe it's like a debug thing. You can have it enabled or disabled here and then your bot sets it uh we'll get into all that later on but like i said we're just going to be doing we're just going to be reading from this file we're not going to be setting let's go ahead and say prefix and keep in mind you do need to put this inside of quotations and then we're going to add a semicolon or excuse me a colon another x set of exclamation points or then another set of quotes then we're going to add our prefix and we're going to do a comma now we add a comma whenever we're finished with that particular set of data so that way we can move on to the next and so now we can go ahead and press enter we'll say token colon we'll put our token in which is that right there that is our token okay different than the last video i'll also have to change this token but that's okay uh because pretty much once we finish this episode i'm not going to need to go back inside of this and i can just keep this a secret and then we'll go ahead and add a number variable here so we'll do another set of quotes and we will say uh we'll just say bot dash age and our age will say is one because it's you know one it's not really one all right and then we'll do a we'll just call it an array well let's not call it an array let's let's just say uh words and let's do underscores here not dashes so we'll say words array and then we'll do a colon here and then we can do that so i mean there's a few different uses for arrays you can have an array you can pretty much have an array of any sort of data type all right so we're going to just do an array of words you could easily do an array of numbers you could do an array of you know floats it, it doesn't really matter um it all depends what your use case is so we'll just go ahead and say hi bye this is array and as you can see we did this i did this last one so you can see that it's multiple characters but it's only going to grab everything that's inside of the commas and we'll talk about how we can use all of these variables as well and then we'll do one more here and we will say we'll just say players and then this is going to be a json object so we're going to put another set of brackets and it's pretty much going to be the same setup right so we can go ahead and say you know players and we'll just we'll just do it really simple we'll just do one so we'll say uh malik and well we'll just won't well, we won't do it this way we'll do it in an easier way so we'll say player uh, actually you know let's just change this to bot info that seems more like it so we'll say name and then we'll just say uh 
tutorial bot and then we can go ahead and say um, version and we'll just say 1.0 okay so now that we have our config.json done let's open up our index.json and i'm going to keep these two open at the same time just so it's a little bit easier and so now one of the cool things that we can do inside of javascript is we can actually do what's called uh destructuring and we can actually extract these uh these different variables or keys from the json file so we don't constantly have to do you know config.json or whatever you set the the uh the const name to so like normally you you would you would type in or not normally but um a beginner might type in const config equals require and then you know they might say uh config oops, excuse me dot slash config dot json and now everything every time you want to get access to something that's in our config file here we have to say config dot prefix you know config dot token whereas we can actually just go ahead and change this to brackets and now what we can do is we can actually just grab all of these beforehand if we want to right so we can say token bot age words array bot info and now we can just start using these so i'm going to just clear some of this out here so on ready let's just go ahead and start logging some of this stuff right so we can now say prefix and we're, let's just make a couple of these because we're going to need a couple uh we can say token we can say bot age we can say words array and now with this we 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 can either just print it all out by saying two string or what we can do is we can grab the individual uh arguments we can say zero so brackets zero one and two now you're probably wondering why am i starting at zero so pretty much everything in uh pretty much any object oriented language uh everything starts with zero right so arrays will start with zero you know a set will start with zero hash sets will start with zero everything starts with zero so for our array zero is high one is by and two is this is array all right and then we'll do one last thing here so we'll say bot info and now what we can do is you're probably wondering well how do i get all of these sub values you just do a dot and now you can see here we have name and version. So now we can do bot info dot name and bot info dot version. So let's go ahead and quickly test this out. So if we run this, oh, let's save it. Now let's run it. Oh, and we provide an invalid token because we never changed our client login. So let's actually go ahead and use this. We'll say token here. Now let's save it and run it. And now we can see here. So we have our prefix, which is there. We have our token. We have our bot age. We have the the first in our array, the second in our array, and the third in our array, or our zero, our one, and our two. We have our bot name, tutorial bot, and we have our bot version, which is 1.0. Well, it just says one, but we put 1.0. If I change this to like 1.4, you can see there that it fixes itself to 1.4. So another really cool thing that we can do is we can actually use these. Oh, what do we got here? Lots of space. So we can actually use these, all of these. And this wants a comma. This is just uh, our linter. Uh, but anyways, we can actually use these inside of strings, right? So instead of single quotes, we just use double quotes. And so now I can say dollar sign squigglies prefix. And we can change this to whatever our pre or our command is. So pong. And now we can do the same thing down here. We just change these to tildes. And we do a dollar sign squiggly prefix and squigglies. And if we close this, open that. All right, let's jump into Discord here. So if we now type in slash ping, you can see there that we still get pong. 
So that is all I got for you guys in this video. This was a little bit of a longer one. I kind of uh, stumbled my words a little bit. So uh, to you guys, this might not be as long, but for me, this is about 12 minutes into recording right now. Uh, but if you guys enjoyed the video, if you learned a lot, or if you learned a little, be sure to leave a comment down below. And again, leave a comment down below for what you are planning to make with your knowledge of Discord JS, because I'm really excited to see what you guys are going to be creating. We may even actually do the bot showcase, which we never did way back when. Uh, but now with a much bigger audience and a much uh, newer version of Discord JS, why not? All right. Uh, once again, like the video and I will see you guys in the next episode. See ya.